ladies and gentlemen, before we get started, I got a quick question for you guys. Let me know down in the comments how you prefer for me to bring these videos to you. Do you prefer for me to be in the newsroom like this? Should I be here in the padded cell sometimes when the news is crazy? Should I continue to be just like this? Or should I just put myself in the center, make myself the focal point, and then just put some type of NBA backdrop in the background? I need to know from you guys because this is you guys. show is the people's show, man, and I am the people's champ. So let me know how you want me to bring you this show, and uh, let's just get right into it. DeMarcus Cousins says that his quad is fully healed, and he intends to play all 82 games this season. Now, this is something that should really come as no surprise to anyone. Uh, the report from Ryan Ward, DeMarcus Cousins on his health right now. I'm working my tail off every single day. My quad is 100% healed. I'm building it up every day. I'm getting stronger, getting in shape. My plan is to come into camp into tip-top shape. My goal is to play all 82 games this season. Now, that's everybody's goal every season. I'm not even going to lie to you. But this just really makes me wonder. We know that he strained that quad when he came back and he was playing with the Golden State Warriors in the uh, playoffs last year. But it really makes me wonder, does he feel like he came back a little bit too early last year? With Andre Iguodala's report, we know that just like all teams, the Warriors do pressure players to get back. He said he had a bone bruise, and they listed it as a bone bruise, but he knew it was a fraction. But hey, they needed him to come back so they could stick LeBron, and they could try to win the championship that year. Similarly, DeMarcus Cousins, he tore his Achilles. We looked at this situation as it couldn't be a better situation for Boogie last year. He's going to come in. He's going to be able to sit on the bench completely rehab because he's going to a team that does not need him and and maybe at the end of January early February something like that he'll be able to come back and give him some quality minutes but he'll definitely be able to take it easy until the playoffs that really didn't happen I felt like he came back a little bit too early and he played a little bit more than I thought that he should have been playing before that now I don't know how much of that was him and how much of that was the Golden State medical staff pushing him back onto the court but the fact that he left it kind of lets leads me to believe that he had a bad taste in his mouth about the entire thing and the way that they kind of pushed Kevin Durant back on the court before he was ready or even allowed him to go back onto the court before he was ready, uh, knowing that he had a torn Achilles. Like, with the Achilles, is either torn or it's not. Maybe they told him, hey, you can't hurt it any worse, so if you just keep playing on it but you take it easy, you're going to have to have surgery regardless of what happens, but the worst thing that can happen is you're going to tear it and you're going to have to have surgery anyway regardless if you tear it or not. So you may, as well, you may as well either go ahead and have the surgery now or you can kind of take it easy and you could maybe be used in a reserve role uh, you know, as, as the season goes on. Obviously, he elected to be using that reserve role, and uh, at, the, at, at the end of the day, it ended up being torn. He had to have the surgery. I hope this is what they told him. I sincerely hope that they did not rush him back and just say, hey, KD, we need you. And the reason I feel like KD just wanted to play is because if you're a basketball player, you saw the hurt on his face at the end of game four, and you knew that he was going hell or high water to come back and play game five. There was nothing that was going to keep him out. And as, as basketball players, we know you come out, hit the first jump shot, hit the second jump shot, you start getting a little bit loose, the juices start flowing, and then he saw someone on him that he felt like had absolutely no business defending him. And, uh, you know, this is somebody he's taking off the dribble and killed in practice over and over uh, because they played together in Oklahoma City. So, you know, he probably, oh, yeah, I got this. This this easy money, clear out. And then he tried to push off, and then, hey, it, it just didn't work out for him. Now, that's the only thing that I can speculate, but... With Boogie actually leaving there, and that's a good situation where he would have been able to stay there, play there. He would have been a big focal part of the offense this year, and he probably would have almost been able to command whatever salary he wanted. Not a, not a tremendous salary, but he would have gotten more than this $3 million that the uh, Lakers have, are giving him. Maybe that's an indictment on the Golden State's medical staff, and, and he felt like they pushed him back, and because they pushed him back a little bit too early, he overcompensated tore the quad, and that made him very limited in the playoffs, and they, they pretty much had to go through the entire playoffs without him. I feel like if Boogie was 100% when Clay went down and when Kevin Durant went down, they still get out of game six if they just give the ball to Boogie. I, I think even, when, even with him playing the way that he was, my father and I said the same thing. If you give the ball to Boogie at the end of that game and just continue to go to him, I think you get out of game six, and then who knows what would have happened in game seven. But that didn't happen. Uh, they lose the series, Kawhi and the Raptors, they win. And uh, now we're talking about Boogie 
with the fully healed quad playing 82 games. Do you think he's going to be able to play 82 games? If he says he can do it and he gets himself into shape, lose maybe 10, 15 pounds, I really feel like he can do it. And I know the Lakers will be able to do some damage because we also saw reports that Rondo, Boogie, and AD got together and talked about getting together on the Lakers and, uh, you know, reuniting and uh, seeing what they could do. So, I'm, I'm excited to see what happens this season, but do you think Boogie will be able to play all 82 games? And if he is able to play 82 games, how effective do you think he's going to be? In our next story, Chauncey Billups says scoring 30 meant too much to Carmelo Anthony. On the ESPN Sirius Satellite Radio Show, uh, Chauncey Billups, I'm just going to I'm just gonna roll the clip and uh, I'm going to show you what he had to say about Melo. I tell you what, it's so crazy. I feel bad for Melo, and here's why. Melo was like a good teammate, man. Like, yeah, it's great Melo guy. practiced every day. He didn't miss any games. Now, the only thing I will say, and I've even told Melo this, scoring 30 meant too much to Melo. He could have games where was, he had 20, 22, we win the game, and he's mad. He might have 36, and he's in there, you know, we lose the game, and he's in there picking everybody up. But I think now you look fast forward to tape, and the reason why he's not in the league, because he's still worthy. Yeah. is he hasn't mentally taken that step back to say, okay, I'll come in and play against backups. I'll try to help the team out. I know I might not be able to close, but I just want to help. Now, looking at what Chauncey Billups says, I have absolutely no doubt in my mind that that's the truth. We saw how Melo was when he was in the Oklahoma City Thunder. We saw how he was when he got to the Houston Rockets. They wanted him to play in a limited capacity. He was going to be the third scorer. But they also wanted him to do like they wanted AI to do at the end of his career when he got traded to the Nuggets. Come off the bench, lead the bench squad. We got a good squad. We just need somebody to come in and get buckets on the second team and, and let us keep whatever lead we have or bring us back. And that's what Melo would have been asked to do. It's very ironic and it's crazy how life is cyclical because that's how Iverson ended his career and that was Melo's beginning of his career, and now this is Melo's end of his career, and it's the same thing where he just doesn't want to be that guy. He doesn't want to be a bench player. I'm not going to lie to you. If I felt like I can start, I wouldn't want to be a bench player either. And we obviously know that Melo has plenty in the tank, but you're just not at that point in your career where anybody's going to pay you to be the number one lead dog. And number two, there are so many teams in the league right now that are set you're just not going to be the lead dog unless you go to somewhere like the Atlanta Hawks. And even then, you're going to be second to Trey Young or what have you. I just feel like it's just one of those issues where if you feel like you have more on the tank, you don't want to be relegated to bench duty. But he has to look at it like this. And this is just me talking. I feel like he doesn't have to look at it like he's being relegated to bench duty. Just look at it more like... I get to come out here and help the team win, just like Chauncey said, and I'll do anything that I can to help the team win. I feel like this, and I'm just going to be 100% honest, we will know if what Chauncey Billups has said, well, I feel like it's true, but we'll absolutely know without a shadow of a doubt if it is true, if he doesn't join one of these teams and take a, a lesser role or what have you. And I'm not saying that he should. I'm not saying that he should have to, because if he feels like he has something in the tank and somebody's willing to pay him to do it, hey, Godspeed to you, my brother. Get your money, get your buckets, do whatever. But I've just never had much for a player that wanted their stats more than they wanted to win the game. And our last story comes directly from my comment section from my boy Rob Cole. Thank you for chiming in on the Russell Westbrook deal, my bro. It's much appreciated. We were able to trace this back to a link where the Cavs, uh, the Cavs beat writer, he was talking about how they can work the three-team deal that would get Russell Westbrook to the Miami Heat. I went back, I researched this extensively today, and more or less, it's exactly what Rob Coe says. There's a clause in J.R. Smith's contract that allows whatever team that has him, they can pay him $4.4 million this year, cut him, and then they'll save the rest of the money against the cap. So let's say it looked like Jr. was slated to make about, he has about $15 million against the cap this year. They can pay him the $4.4 million, and then they will be able to save that $11 million against the cap. So that means this is the most likely scenario that's going to happen with all of this. You're going to have the Miami Heat, they're going to have to give some players to the Oklahoma City Thunder to make the, to make the money match up. But if they give the players to the Oklahoma City Thunder, they're going to have to get them under the luxury tax. The Oklahoma City Thunder is about $1.3 million over the tax. I saw another thing that said 2.3. At any rate, 
what will most likely happen is this. Cleveland has more cap space, so players will go to Cleveland from Miami. Cleveland will trade J.R. Smith to Oklahoma City. Oklahoma City will trade Russell Westbrook to Miami. Now, when Oklahoma City trades Russell Westbrook to Miami and they get J.R. Smith, in all likelihood, they're going to pay him that $4.4 million and then cut him. That's going to save them $11 million against the cap, and that'll put them about $9 million below the hard cap, and so they won't be in the luxury tax. Cleveland, meanwhile, will pick up some players. They'll probably get somebody like Justice Winslow. Uh, Goran Dragic has, a, and has an expiring contract, so they'll probably take that on. Um, and they'll probably take someone like, they might probably take Deion Waiters back. However it works out, Miami Heat has the contracts, OKC has the player, and Cleveland has the cap space. And so they want to reverse all of that. OKC wants the cap space. Cleveland really doesn't care what they get, but the Miami Heat wants the one player. And so that's probably the way that it's going to work out. So just to recap, Russell Westbrook will go to the Miami Heat. The Miami Heat will trade a couple of players to Cleveland, and Cleveland is going to give J.R. Smith to OKC. OKC is going to pay him, then they're probably going to cut him, and then we're probably going to see him sign for the vet minimum with the Lakers or something because, as we said, he that's where he's wanted to go. But I just thought I'd try to catch you guys up on that. Once again, appreciate Rob Cole. Anybody that wants to send me anything like this or tell me something that I might have missed, let me know down in the comments. Hit me up on Twitter. Hit me up on Instagram. Do whatever you got to do. But that's all I got for you guys today, man. Listen, you guys have been awesome. I really appreciate everything that you guys have been doing. I really need you to like the video if you like the video, but also I need you to comment down below. Comments and likes are what really drive YouTube right now. And if you don't get the, I, I'm getting the likes, but if I don't get the comments, then the channel's not really gonna go anywhere. So if you guys could do that for me, it would be awesome. I really appreciate it. Anyway, gotta get up out of here. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And uh, I'm gonna catch y'all next time. Till next time. It's your boy Jay Easy, AKA Fresh from the Barbershop, BK the People's Champ. Hello!